This is Matthew Cratter's Bitcoin University. Today I want to talk about the ECB attack on Bitcoin. There's been a lot of talk on X Twitter about this paper. I want to provide some background to it as well. Why now? Why is this paper coming out? It's because the European Union, the EU, is in an accelerating state of decline due to decades of poor policy decisions, very high tax regimes, high regulatory burdens, unfriendly environment for entrepreneurs and productive people, also anti-natalist policies combined with a general sense of self-loathing and hatred of its own cultural heritage. This is, of course, a problem in the U.S. as well at times. Finally, number five, moronic energy policy leading to an actual deindustrialization, even at the very heart of Europe's historical manufacturing center, which is Germany. This tweet, good morning from Germany, where the deindustrialization continues. High energy prices and rigid rules are hurting Germany's industry. Companies have begun to relocate their production or build new plants abroad. Industry now accounts for only 23.5% of German GDP compared to greater than 30% just a few years ago. The process is in full swing. It could soon become more potent. In other words, accelerate. And I believe that is true as well. Also this tweet, that's the most scary chart I've seen in a while. Unfunded pension entitlements in major European countries between 300% and 500% of GDP. Mixed with collapsing demographics, it's just a perfect storm brewing. All of which is to say massive money printing is coming soon from the ECB, which implies that a massive Bitcoin pump is also coming for European holders. So the real question is how will the corrupt how will corrupt EU totalitarian leaders deal with this? One way is through outright theft. This is the print, pump, tax, repeat, wealth confiscation strategy that I've discussed before on this channel. Basically, governments and central banks pump asset prices through money printing, and then they confiscate those gains through a combination of realized or unrealized capital gains taxes, maybe even wealth taxes, as Norway has tried to do, for example. I'll put a link to this video in the description notes below. And we're seeing this already play out in various EU countries like Italy, for example, raising the Bitcoin capital gains tax, or at least planning to raise it from 26% to 42%. And Italy does not have an exit tax, so this will probably, unfortunately for them, lead to a huge exodus of Bitcoiners. Another obvious route that corrupt EU totalitarian leaders will take when dealing with Bitcoin's coming meteoric rise is propaganda. And I think that this paper from the ECB is in this category. But before we talk about it, if you're finding this video helpful so far, I just ask you to help to support the channel. Hit the subscribe button. That really does help with the YouTube algorithm. Leave a like, leave a comment, question, suggestion for a future video. Share this video with a friend or family member. So here's how the propaganda works. They always assume the conclusions that they want, and then they work backwards from there with intellectually dishonest arguments. So if Bitcoin goes up, that's a bad thing, according to the ECB. If Bitcoin goes down, that's a bad thing, according to the ECB. And if Bitcoin goes sideways, that's also a bad thing. You can see how the intellectual game is rigged. Now, at the bottom of the bear market in November of 2022, the ECB came out with this paper. In fact, the exact same authors that we're going to be discussing came out with a paper declaring that Bitcoin was dead. This was November 30th, 2022 from the ECB blog, Bitcoin's Last Stand. And this paper begins, the value of Bitcoin peaked at 69,000 US dollars in November 2021 before falling to USD uh, 17,000 US dollars by mid-June 2022. Since then, the value has fluctuated around US dollar, around $20,000 per coin. For Bitcoin proponents, the seeming stabilization signals a breathing on the way to new heights. More likely, however, it is an artificially induced last gasp before the road to irrelevance. And this was already foreseeable before FTX went bust and sent the Bitcoin price to well below 16,000. This road to irrelevance turned out not to be true. Ulrich Binzel and Jürgen Schaff, the authors of this paper and the other papers we're going to discuss today, could not have been more wrong. With this paper, they literally bottom ticked the Bitcoin market with their bearish price prediction. So will we ever get a retraction or apology from them? Of course not. They won't even mention their mistake in a, in a subsequent paper. Instead, they're going to keep just doubling down. And this, in fact, is what they've done. So, for example, we're central bank propagandists, and we think that Bitcoin is an asset, asset that's not suitable for investment. Even though an American firm with $10 trillion 
under management says that Bitcoin is a great asset and quite suitable for investment, but we must be right because we have fancy PhDs and you need to trust the economic science. That's basically my tongue-in-cheek summary of their follow-up paper. So we first had this one about Bitcoin's last stand, predicting the end of Bitcoin. And then when it didn't happen a couple months later, they had to make this uh, this paper, ETF approval for Bitcoin, the naked emperor's new clothes dated February 22nd, 2024, again by the same authors, Ulrich Binzel and Jürgen Schaff. And this paper is about the BlackRock ETF and the spot Bitcoin ETF approvals in the US. And there's their summary, Bitcoin has failed on the promise to be a global decentralized digital currency. Again, Bitcoin's price has risen a lot at this point, so they're not attacking that. Uh, but they're attacking uh, its function as a medium of exchange. Instead, it is used for illicit transactions. The latest approval, approval of an ETF doesn't change the fact that Bitcoin is not suitable as a means of payment or as an investment, in spite of the fact that BlackRock, with 10 trillion under assets, assets under management, believes that it is a good form of investment. When this paper came out, Bitcoin was trading at approximately 51 thousand and as I'm recording this it's at 67 thousand so it looks like they're wrong about that again and that is the context for the desperation of the paper that we're going to be discussing this is the paper that everyone's talking about on Twitter that just came out it's called the distributional consequences of Bitcoin again by these two these two same hacks from the ECB the abstract goes like this. The original promise of Nakamoto 2008, in other words, they're citing the Bitcoin white paper by Satoshi, the original promise to provide the world with a better global means of payment has not materialized. Instead, the focus has increasingly shifted to Bitcoin as an investment asset promising high capital gains. Now, these are talking points that have been taken straight from the ship coiners. Quote, Bitcoin has failed as a medium of exchange. Bitcoin has failed to fulfill Satoshi's vision. This is basically what they're saying. So buy my ship coin instead. Though in this case, the ship coin is the euro itself. And as Joe Nakamoto points out in this tweet, the euro has not had a good time since inception, falling 90% against gold. This is one way to measure the declining purchasing power of the euro since inception in 99. Is it Bitcoin's fault that the euro was imploding even before Bitcoin was invented? Why do these ECB economists show so little self-awareness or compassion for the people of Europe whose economic energy has been siphoned off by ECB money printing? This is catastrophic for civilization or for a group of countries to lose this kind of purchasing power. But these ECB economists, they're attacking Bitcoin instead of showing some self-awareness. Is it because these authors are nothing more than regime apologists? The thing is their talking points are constantly changing. They never correct or, or apologize for previous errors as we pointed out. Their Keynesian economic framework is the worst kind of pseudoscience, talking about things like aggregate demand being a good thing, for example, when it's just a, a, a front for government spending, as we'll talk about in subsequent videos. These authors also conveniently left out a couple of very important Satoshi quotes about Satoshi's motivation for creating Bitcoin. He wasn't just setting up a payment system or medium of exchange as their selective quotes would lead you to believe, but also he had a very strong dislike of central banks. They failed to mention central banks like the ECB that these authors work for. And this is the famous February 2009 email from Satoshi or blog post or forum post. The central bank must be trusted not to debase the currency, but the history of fiat currencies is full of breaches of that trust. So Satoshi is quite aware of this store value piece of money. He compares Bitcoin to gold in this recently unearthed quote from the Marty Malmi emails. And I'm going to read this because I think it's quite interesting. This is again an email from Satoshi. Historically, people have taken up scarce commodities as money, if necessary, taking up whatever is at hand, such as shells or stones. Each has a kernel of usefulness, in other words, each commodity that helped bootstrap the process, but the monetary value ends up being much more than the functional value alone. Most of the value comes from the value that others place in it. Gold, for, for instance, is pretty non-corrosive and easily malleable, but most of its value is clearly not from that. Brass is shiny and similar in color. The vast majority of gold sits in unused vaults, basically by being held by central banks like the ECB, 
owned by governments that could care less about its prettiness. Until now, no scarce commodity that can be traded over a communications channel without a trusted third party has been available. But as Satoshi is arguing here with Marty Malmi, Bitcoin is this scarce digital commodity that functions a lot like gold as a, scare, as a store of value, and it's now available to send over communication channels. And it's very interesting in this paper as part of their critique. Uh, I'm still working my way through it, but it looks to me like they don't even mention gold as a major asset. This is, of course, some, a huge uh, blind spot for central banks, and it's where they came from. They originally held a lot of gold, so it's something that central bankers do not like. And so as we'll see in a subsequent video, the authors compare Bitcoin's market cap and its utility to things like stocks and real estate and bonds and say it's very hard to value. But they never use this example of gold, and they don't point out that Satoshi was quite aware of Bitcoin as a store of value. Now, this is going to be a problem for the ECB that's just going to accelerate right now as I'm recording this in terms of top monetary assets worldwide. When you're looking at the monetary base, Bitcoin is number six in the world. It just recently surpassed the UK. It's second or it's sixth only to uh, going up the list, Japan, China, Eurozone, in other words, the Euro, uh, United States, and gold. And so this is the reason that central bank economists like the, these ECB economists are writing this paper about Bitcoin. They're not so worried that it failed as a medium of exchange, and they're really going to have their work cut out for them. And it looks like they're just basically catching up to the famous Max Kaiser quote, Bitcoin has no top because fiat has no bottom. So Bitcoin's going to continue to accelerate upwards. There's one point in the paper where they point out that Bitcoin could even go to 10 million euro per coin. So I think this is a very interesting paper. I want to dig into it a little bit more in subsequent videos. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.